Welcome back to Grit Gym. Today we're talking shoulder health, how to create this shoulder, the, 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 the sturdy shoulder that you need to be able to get into your workouts, to be able to do the day-to-day -day stuff so that uh, you don't have to wonder about getting hurt or if, how to get even out of pain when you are hurt. Uh, and if you want more information about this, go to gritgym.com slash PDS. P as in uh, play, D as in dog, S as in strategy, and uh, we will go through and figure out how to do this uh, for yourself, and we actually can do these remote because of technology now, we can do this through video, um, but go over there and, and, and grab yours. But the, the, the reason I'm at a desk is to show you uh, that uh, the alignment of some of this kind of stuff that can happen. You know, when my arms are up on the desk, my shoulders seem fairly elevated. Now, when I put my arms down on the, the, the arm rails, they get a little bit lower. And the reason I'm going over the alignment first is because that's the first thing that you need to look at. And uh, the, the reason for that is, it's the first thing that we can start to really gain some, uh, some, some information around, okay? So if my shoulder is sitting really low, there's three things, there's three, there's three really big things that we need to look at around alignment. We need to look at the shoulder blade and if it sits very, very low, we need to see if it sits in an anterior tilt and then we need to look at the collarbone. If you look at my collarbones right now, there's like a, like a decent, like maybe 20, 30 degrees of upward slope. That's, uh, you want about 30 degrees. You want about 30 degrees of upward slope to your collarbone. So real quick, if, you, uh, if, if you're interested, go look into, your, uh, into the mirror somewhere, flip your phone so that you can see the, the selfie camera, put it on you and see where does your shoulder sit naturally? Where does that collarbone sit? If your collarbone, which most people do, sits fairly parallel to the ground, you don't want that. That puts a lot of stress on your scalene, cervicalomastoid, and on your, tra on your trapezius. And it's because we sit in positions like this on a regular day-to-day -day basis. I can tilt this down just a little bit. Maybe I can't. Um, but you put the it, you put your arms in your armrest. We text. We sit in all these positions, and our lats kind of pull us down, and we end up sitting in this very depressed scapular position that we don't necessarily want. Okay, so if you're sitting in that scapular position, your shoulders are pulling down. You're going to have a, a pretty decent amount of protective tension going on in your trap. Most people think, man, I need to stretch this. I need to stretch this thing. That's the absolute last thing that you should probably do to protective tension. Protective tension is there for a reason, and it's because it's the last ditch effort that your shoulder has to hold you in position okay part of the reason you have this is because that serratus anterior down here isn't kicking on to pull that shoulder blade back from anterior tilt to more of a neutral or optimal alignment which you do want almost everybody that I assess in a program design session has that weakness in their serratus anterior it's this muscle right up front uh, it attaches to the so if this is my right shoulder blade, it attaches right here on the inside, pulling that sucker forward and and uh, and and tilting that shoulder blade back. And it really, it's when you get your arms up overhead. Look at what my collarbone does when I put my arm up overhead. Look what my uh, look where my shoulder went when I put my arm up overhead. Everything kind of elevates a little bit. Most people don't do this very well. So if you want very shoulders, very sturdy shoulders. You need to look at the shoulder blade and figure out what is actually going on there because how your thoracic spine moves is how your rib cage is going to be set up, is how your shoulder blade is going to move, is how you, and how your shoulder blade is going to move, is how your upper arm is going to move, and that's going to drive the entire arm through any motion that you do, whether you're hammering on something, uh, whether you're doing desk work, whether you're doing a workout, whatever it is. And if you don't have the shoulders to be able to get through a, a workout, then that's a problem because you're just going to be adding dysfunction to what you're trying to do, and dysfunction leads to an injury, and we do not want an injury in the gym. So if you want big muscles, you have to have a certain amount of volume in your workout. If you want to have a lot of volume in your workout, you need a shoulder that can get through the workout, and otherwise you're causing an injury. So, um, so sitting at a desk, this is what ends up happening. If your shoulders are sitting really low, then we need to do things to get them up, and a lot of people can't really even get their arm up above their head without a significant rib flare. So. Um, so you want to get very clear on, on what's going on there. And if you want to know if your serratus anterior is really functioning the way that it needs to, if you're sitting in that anterior tilt or your, uh, or, or your rotator cuff doesn't have enough internal rotation, uh, or your shoulder doesn't have enough internal rotation to it because of something impeding it, usually that's a thoracic re mobility restriction. We know that from thoracic mobility, uh, that in a thoracic mobility restriction, the body will do weird things like shut down the amount of internal rotation in your shoulder. And if you don't have that, then you can't do all the other things that you want to do. And if you're interested, go sign up for a program design session at gridgym.com slash PDS. And, uh, and you can get that offer there, but protective tension. Uh, but we're going to, we're, we're going through, there's a reason I'm sitting at a desk. 
alignment, and protective tension. And the, when you look at alignment, you look at it, how the shoulder blade actually sits. Does it sit nice and flat like this, or does it kind of anteriorly tilt and wrap around? Okay, we want that nice flat position. And if our serratus anterior is pulling us forward, and our mid-load trap is kind of pulling us around and helping out that, then, and those two muscles are very, very strong, and we have enough thoracic rotation and extension, and we're sitting in good position there, then the shoulder is probably going to function very, very well. If we don't have that, then we're gonna have a really low collarbone, we're gonna put a lot of pressure on the sternocleidomastoid and the scalenes over here. These are these two muscles. Now, the interesting thing about these is that uh, when these are stressed, so when your shoulders are sitting really low, see how stressed they are? See how like, like they kind of just look all stressed out? This is like, if you, you're gonna notice this on people throughout the day after watching this video. Uh, a lot of people are walking around with this stress in their sternocleid, in, in their, in their scalene, and, and uh, it, we'll just call it the SCM. It's called sternocleidomastoid. I mean, these are just two muscles. Referred pain from sternocleidomastoid and scalene goes down the front of the shoulder and the back of the arm, okay? So if you're feeling pain in the front of your shoulder, it very likely could be this, especially if we're tilting that down and it just doesn't take, we should be lifting that shoulder blade up back into a better alignment anyway. So, um, so just something very, very simple can be the answer to your prayers in terms of shoulder health. Um, but that upper trap also wants to take over for everything that we do. Okay. We put our arms over our head, trap wants to take over. So we have to tone that down by building up all the other muscles around it. Right. And that protective tension, listen to it. Do not stretch the, do not stretch your trap. It's, it's so silly. You see this happen all the time. You see physical therapists, chiropractors telling people to, stre to, to, uh, to stretch their trapezius and th their patient's shoulders are already sitting clear down here. That's protective tension and that you want to keep. You want to keep that. You, you want to do anything you can to get those shoulder blades up. If anything, those, that, those chiropractic and physical therapists should be telling them to raise their shoulders, not drop them down. Dropping them down is already putting tension on the tense tissue when we don't want that. So we want to get in a position where we pull that shoulder blade up and forward. I don't know if my mic is going to allow me to go, but we want to pull that position so that we're more here and less here. Okay, more here. Not my upper back, my shoulder blade. Okay, I'm not moving my upper back right now. I'm just moving my shoulder blade. There's a big difference between there, it's kind of like there, there's a nice neutral optimal position and there. I'm not moving my upper back. I'm moving my shoulder blade right there, okay? We want to look at the shoulder blade and where it is in alignment to us. And it really, it's very hard to see this, but I would say the first thing to do is go look in the mirror and see if that collarbone is sticking up. But come into Grit Gym, gritgym.com slash PDS, get one of the, get a program design session at Grit Gym, come in and we will tell you what's going on. We'll look at the alignment at your upper back, we'll test your thoracic mobility, we'll look at your shoulder blade, see how it's moving and how it's aligned on your body. And that will tell us a lot about what's going on at the actual shoulder. It is almost always an issue back down the line, not forward. It's almost always an issue in the thoracic spine and then in the shoulder blade, almost always. And, uh, and if, it's not, if it's not alignment and it's not a mobility or stability restriction, uh, in either of those, and it's not a movement pattern thing, then we probably have a structural dysfunction that is going to require a, a surgeon, but that is just absurdly rare. Uh, and even if it did, we would still probably be able to get back to what you needed to be so that you weren't in pain without the surgery. Surgery is an absolute last option. But Definitely head on over to, uh, to uh, gridgym.com slash PDS, get a program design session, and, and we'll get you set up. But go look in the mirror, see how your shoulder blade set, or see how that collarbone setting. It should have a nice 30 degree upward slope. And if it doesn't, then you probably are one of these people that has a lot of tension in their upper back, and this is probably not all due to stress. You might have a little bit of uh, stress to the front of your shoulder that kind of hurts a little bit. And the referred pain from scalene and sternocleidomastoid so it goes right down the front. And dot com slash pds and signing up for a program design session and you're going to get a ton out of this so um so i'll leave it at that and we'll be back tomorrow i'm going to do 10 days of shoulder health so for the next two weeks or each weekday we're going to do 10 to 20 minutes 
on, uh, on your shoulders. This first one was on alignment. Look at your shoulder blade and look at your collarbone. That's gonna tell you a lot about the alignment of your shoulder. And if those are, if your shoulder blades, if this is sitting flat to the ground, you need to spend some time pulling that, getting, getting that serratus anterior to pull that shoulder blade into posterior tilt. And, uh, and that will take care of that upper trap being stiff on you all the time. But anyway, have a good Monday. Out.